Hello folks and welcome to F1 Paddock Pass, your pre-race edition for the 2018 Canadian Grand Prix here on the uh, Ile de Notre Dame circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal, Canada. Uh, really looking forward to this one after the Monaco Grand Prix. It's great to be back in Montreal and we shall start, I think, with uh, local hero, Mr. Lance Stroll. Uh, not been an easy season for Williams, of course. We have reported many times the difficulties they've faced with the car, but Lance has been excelling uh, in a difficult, difficult time. How much is he looking forward to his home race here back in Canada? Um, does it feel good coming home or does it ramp up the pressure? No, it's 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 all good energy. Uh, I love being home. I love uh, I love my fans, uh, you know, the buzz. It's uh, it's it's all good stuff. And it's the 40th anniversary of, of the first race and Gilles win here. How big is that Villeneuve name, be it Gilles or, or Jacques, for you growing up in Canada to have that spectre, that, that great legendary name? He's, uh, you know, he's an icon, Gilles. Uh, you know, he, he impacted the sport massively. And to follow his, uh, his footsteps as, as a Canadian Formula One driver, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's very special. Um, yeah, hopefully... Uh, He'll be uh, watching from above, uh, you know, this weekend, and uh, I can um, do him proud. Well, here's the thing: the car's not great at the moment, but your personal performances have been, I think, exceptional. I think everybody agrees that. A lot of talk at the moment that you're close to, to renewing for 2019. How's that? How's the feeling in the team at the moment? How are you working with the guys, and how hopeful are you of, of re-signing for, for next year? Yeah, I've, I've heard that today. To be honest, I, I'm not aware. So. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, uh, we'll, we'll see. Weekend by weekend, um, you know, it's it's a long year. Uh, we we definitely want to turn things around. That's uh, all, all my attention is on uh, is on is on how we can be better and do better uh, at the moment. I'm not thinking uh, long term right now. I'm, I'm just trying to stay in the present. Um, so yeah, uh, this weekend in Montreal, uh, we'll be doing everything we can to, uh, to 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 pick up a good result. Do you feel you've made some steps over the opening races of this season to give you some confidence coming into this race? Definitely. Um, you know, looking back at last year, where I was at this stage, uh, I was just completely different to where I am today. I've achieved a lot, uh, you know, in a year, um, and that gives me a lot of confidence coming into this race. Uh, you know, even even just the beginning of the season, I've scored some points already, and that wasn't the case last year. So um, that's that's all good, and uh, you know, I, I know we can do it. We did it in Baku. Uh, we had a good weekend. The car was there, and we delivered. And uh, if if the car's there and the package is there this weekend. As a team, uh, we, we can do a good job and, and we can deliver again. So, expectations low at Williams, but expectations have been high at Formula One's American team all the way through the season. However, Monaco was ghastly for the team. Uh, neither of their drivers in the points, none of them, or neither of them, I should say, looked like being all the way through the weekend. But, in a season in which Haas has looked so good, did something go off the boil in Monaco? Was it just track specific? We talked to Kevin Magnussen to find out if it's just a blip or something that we can expect for the rest of the season from the team that started out the year so very well. Um, yeah, we damaged uh, quite a bit of, uh, of the car on Friday and we didn't have any spares so we kind of just ran with the damaged parts, uh, cleaned them up and uh, kept running with, with those. We couldn't really do anything else. So uh, now here we've got new parts again. Um, even slightly different with a new design and on a few bits. So, uh, you know, I think we're positive that we can get back in close to our our usual shape. Car can be quite fragile. Can't, we've seen it sort of breaking apart on a number of occasions throughout the year. Why is, I mean, I know Monaco's Monaco and break things fairly easily there, but why, why is the car so fragile? I think it's um, always a, a compromise of, of weight, of course. You try and get the car as light as possible. Uh, it's something that we've, you know, quickly addressed early in the season and started working on, and then you see the result now. And I think uh, in Monaco, you know, it's more a case of just, uh, yeah, that we found a, a weakness uh, in a certain part, and you know, we've we've changed that, and and hopefully it shouldn't be a problem anymore. So, and, and on top of that, we've got new parts, so we can we, we have fresh new new bits on the car. Does that mean the car's going to be heavier if it's stronger? That's potentially mine slower yeah it's a little bit a uh, little bit heavier but it doesn't mean we're going to be overweight it uh, yeah the car is, is quite light and healthy so uh, i don't think we need to worry about putting a little bit more weight on on the car 
um, if, if it can make this, the car stronger at least. Championship position at the moment doesn't seem to reflect the pace that you or the car has. Seventh right now, where should you be and what, where can you be? I think we, we could have potentially been, I don't know, I, don't, I haven't looked completely, I'm not so sure, but I think we could have been around fifth or fourth if we'd actually got the points out of, of the pace that we have in the car. Uh, especially in Australia where, where we were in fifth, fourth and fifth or something, fourth and sixth maybe, I can't remember. No, we were fourth and fifth, and uh, and and no no car finished from from our team. So uh, it's all good looking back at that, but I think we just need to kind of start scoring points on a regular. We've got the car to do that. Down at McLaren now, the team's hoping for a better weekend here because they've got a new power unit in the back. Renault teams with uh, an upgraded PU in the back of their cars. Um, Fernando is celebrating his 300th race this weekend. The statistical geeks, nerds, whatever, will have a big fight amongst themselves as to whether it's his 300th race, 300th weekend, 300th whatever. What is it? Fernando says it's his 300th and we shall agree with him. There he is, just walking off to his little 300th birthday party. Doesn't look a day over 30. What is he? Four? Five? Six? I think he's about the same age as me. That makes him 37. Doesn't matter. 300th race, this 300th something this weekend. He thinks it is, therefore it is. We're not even talking to him. We're talking to Stoffel. Uh, Fernando seems to have been able to make the best of the upgrades that have happened to the car this weekend, extracting the most in both qualifying and race trim. Van Dorn, though, still not quite getting the most out of it in qualifying situations. How much does he need to get on top of that in order to really take that fight to Fernando and push the team further up the grid? Yeah, definitely looking forward to Canada. Um, you know, the last couple of races have not really been um, very successful for us as a team. and. You know, um, coming here gives us brand new opportunities. So, uh, looking forward to this weekend. Um, you know, special circuit as well. It's a semi street circuit, and and yeah, always a highlight uh, to come to come here. Uh, how much hope is there in the upgraded Renault engine in the back of your car this weekend? Well, hopefully it will be a, a step forward. Uh, you know, there's not really much more we can tell about it. Um, you know, probably all the three teams, uh, the Renault power teams, are gonna gonna have uh, the new engines, and and you know, hopefully we can see a clear a clear step forward. You know, that at least will help us to to kind of fight a bit the cars we you know we are currently fighting, like the Haas's, the Force Indias. Uh, you know, we're in a very tight battle with them. So every every little gain we can make is uh, is beneficial to us. How much do you think the upgrades that you've put on over the last few races are gonna uh, uh, sort of improve your performance here in Canada. We've made steps forwards every, you know, every weekend, and obviously we had a big package in in Barcelona. Um, you know, we had a good car in, in Monaco as well. Uh, we maybe didn't really 100% show that, but the feeling is really that we are moving forward every every weekend, and you know there will be some new bits on the car this weekend again. And uh, yeah, it's it's really waiting and see where where we're going to be. I don't think the track layout is, is probably not our most favourable one, but uh, yeah, hopefully we can show something. And how about your personal performance? Are you happy with with how you're driving at the moment? Um, I'm I'm happy. Yeah, um, I know you know in qualifying I've I've uh, not really been able to to be ahead of Fernando, but I think you know one thing is the statistics and one thing is uh, is the actual performance. And uh, you know I think on some of the occasions I've been I've been a bit unlucky. Some some you know uh, things have not uh, not really panned out like uh, like I wanted it to be. But on the other occasions. You know, Fernando was just uh, just a bit better, so uh, I feel in a much better place now than uh, than 12 months ago. You know, the gap between us has been has been very very close, and uh, yeah, I feel uh, I feel like I'm moving in the right direction. Big moves down at Sauber this week. You can't have failed to have seen the headlines about uh, pretty major a member of staff leaving Ferrari, moving here. It's the second major signing that Sauber have made in terms of aerodynamics, car design uh, in the 2018 season. So the team is still doing quite a big rebuild job. But having said that, I think they're already way above expectation for this season. Marcus Ericsson and Charles Leclerc both looking at potential points finishes in Monaco. And it went a little bit under the radar, but Marcus Ericsson ultimately finished uh, just a couple of seconds out of the points in Monaco uh, two weeks ago. We talked to him, we caught up with him on how he felt Monaco went and really where the team find themselves, uh, not even halfway through a season which is going much better uh, than anybody expected. And the team's made some big signings uh, from a design perspective this year. How optimistic are you of the direction that the team's taken and the steps that it can make in, in the coming months? I think the team has been uh, sort of in a new startup phase for the last sort of 12 months and especially after the Alfa Romeo coming into the to the team it's been a lot of things happening very positive things and 
uh, yeah, it's like I've said for a long time, I think this team have a great future and uh, it will be very interesting to see where it goes. Expectations for this weekend? It's quite high. I think uh, I've said uh, after Monaco that we should go into every weekend and have like the mindset to try and get to Q2 and, uh, and try and score points on Sundays because we're on that level now that we, we should consider ourselves a midfield team and we need to have that uh, sort of mindset. And I think that's, 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 that's what we need to have this weekend as well. I think we should, uh, should be there mixing it up and we've seen this year how close the midfield is. So. Uh, yeah, we need to be there, we need to fight and we need to have a good weekend and, and see how far we can get it. And so, to Toro Rosso and mostly to Brendan Hartley. Uh, stories in the press over the last couple of days, uh, a seeming confirmation, uh, certainly from some quarters in the paddock, that Toro Rosso uh, had approached Lando Norris, McLaren's junior, currently racing and doing brilliantly in the Formula 2 championship to race for them um, uh, for some part of this season, which leaves poor old Brendan, uh, as we understand it, the guy most likely to get the drop uh, out of Toro Rosso. Is that fair? It's odd because the team have been making really positive noises about Brendan all season. His experience in sports cars, what he's been able to bring to the mix in terms of developing the car, pushing the team forward. But so far he hasn't quite been able to put that perfect race weekend together. Is that counting against him? Should that count against him so much so early in a year which is still, if we look at it, on its merits, essentially still his rookie year uh, in Formula One. Much uncertainty for the team, particularly for Brendan coming into the Canadian Grand Prix. Um, try not to. It's obviously annoying when you, when you hear rumours in, in the press uh, for a second weekend in a row, but um, honestly, I'm t taking the same approach as I did in Monaco. Um, I know what my contract says, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very confident with the work that I'm doing behind the scenes, d developing the car with all the engineers and all the people, and uh, yeah, Monaco didn't go my way. I was, I was strong all weekend. I showed that, but unfortunately in Q1, when it, when it all needed to come together, it didn't. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a weekend that I'm really looking forward to. We have a new update from from Honda. Um, I believe that we we could have a strong weekend here. Nobody knows what this system does to drivers better than you. Does that make you mentally stronger uh, to deal with the pressures being placed upon you? <laughs> There's always pressures, and, and I think generally as a sports person, the biggest pressure comes comes from yourself. Um, we're all racing. We all want to do better than our, our teammates and our competitors, and and uh, yeah, I don't have. And as many points on the board as, as I possibly could have, especially Bahrain is, is one that got away. Again, in Monaco, I think uh, deserved more with, with the pace that we had a weekend. Um, the good news is in Formula One, a lot of people seem to have short memories, so you're only as good as your last race, and hopefully the headlines will be different next week. What do you need to put together that perfect weekend to turn those headlines around? Um, good result, obviously. But yeah, I, I, honestly, I was really happy with our performance during the week in, in Monaco. With, We've brought some great updates to the car. Honda's brought an update this weekend. Um, I think as, as a team, we've started really understanding how to unlock all the performance from, from this new car. We had a few poor races after, after Barcelona. Um, some of that was due to long straight lines, cold weather, when we, we didn't switch the tyres on enough. I, I really believe that this, this weekend could be a good one for us, but now there's still some work, a lot of work behind the scenes and in the cockpit to get the most out of it. New, new track for myself and Pierre, uh, so it'll be a steep learning curve the first session, but. Yeah, I'm confident and uh, yeah, not really thinking about headlines, just focused on my job. Thanks. Now, in Monaco Grand Prix, Renault had both drivers in the points. Heath, if you turn around quickly, you'll see Carlos Sainz there, was unhappy at the end of the race because the team had put him onto a strategy that ultimately saw him drop places uh, and come home in 10th place. Didn't it? You weren't too happy with the strategy in Monaco, were you? I'm a happy man now. OK, but you weren't then. I'm very happy today. <laughs> okay, you, you need to go to Fernando's parties, don't you? We'll let you go. I um, think that pretty much tells you everything. Anyway, um, the strategy that I believe he wanted the team to give him, they ultimately gave to Nico Hulkenberg, which saw him finish, uh, I think, three places ahead of him at the chequered flag. Anyway, we're going to talk to Nico Hulkenberg because that Monaco result came on the back of two results which weren't exactly what he wanted. But Nico right now, we spent the day with him yesterday, actually, for a feature that you'll see later, I think, this weekend uh, on your F1 social channels. 
He's in more of a relaxed mood than I've seen him, I'm going to say, in years. And what that is doing is it is being shown on track as well. Confidence uh, and happiness begats you know, performance, and performance then begats more confidence and more, more happiness. And that is certainly the, the very positive place that Nico Hulkenberg finds him in now. And that Monaco result will just do more to puff that chest out, lift those shoulders and give Hulkenberg that positivity that puts him on his day in the realms of being one of the best drivers in this sport. Engine upgrades as well this weekend. How are you feeling ahead of Montreal? Yeah, positive and, and, and confident. As confident as we can be. I think, you know, as as we've seen so far this year, the top three teams, they're still, you know, well ahead. Um, and then it's it's us in the midfield battling with McLaren, Force India, Haas. Um, and yeah, our aim and target uh, must be again to, to beat those guys and to be fourth best. And for engine upgrades yourself, what does it, just explain exactly what that means for your performance? Well, hopefully it brings you know more horsepower and therefore uh, better lap times, more top speed, which obviously you know helps you being uh, more competitive. Tricky circuit as well. Obviously, some of it is street and some of it has been there for a long time. Um, how do you sort of get your way around a circuit like this? No, it's a fun circuit. It's really cool. I, I enjoy it a lot here. Um, you know, to get close to the walls on, on a lot of the corner exits. Um, it's a challenging track, also with the curbs, uh, how the how the track is here. But um, yeah, it's fun. It's good. Obviously, you need to you know get into rhythm and you know build it up steady during the weekend. Uh, there's track improvement. Usually, it's it's a lot here too. So you just have to you know move with the track also. And just finally, was it important after two DNFs to get points out last time out, especially looking at this race now? Yeah, it was. I mean, uh, after two DNFs, it was important to finish the race in Monaco and also good to get, you know, a bunch of points again on, on my account. So uh, looking to continue that here. Another team whose drivers had very uh, different Monaco Grand Prix was uh, Force India, Esteban Ocon, with I think his best result of the year in P6. But Sergio Perez not happy with the overall result. Hello, Esteban. How are you? All good. I'm going to get you, sucker. No, no, no. Yeah, I am. For the last time. I have Ah, but do you have eyes everywhere when you're in the cockpit? No, no, no. Yeah, I owe him one after the last paddock pass. Have some things stored. Anyway, he was very happy after Monaco. Perez not quite so much, but Sergio didn't mind because he was flying straight to Mexico to get hitched. Uh, it looked like it was a beautiful affair, uh, a really fabulous day. He's here now, happy as you like. Not convinced his beautiful bride will be so happy as their honeymoon has been put on hold for a weekend trip to Montreal. Uh, well, Sergio, uh, congratulations. Everyone's asking about the wedding, but how was the stag do? <laughs> it was good. I was, I was very happy and I, I enjoyed it a lot. How was the wedding, though? It was good. I, I spent a great night with, with good friends, with all my family, all, all my people. So I was very happy to see um, happy faces there. I hear Canada's really good as well for a honeymoon. Uh, well, not when you're racing, I think, but uh, it's a very uh, busy part of the of the season. Uh, but we will we will spend a good honeymoon. Okay, well, let's talk about racing then. Monaco, you said that um, you should have scored points, and it was a struggle for you guys. Coming here, though, what can you learn from a race like Monaco? I think we, there we should have a, a score good good amount of points with with both cars. Unfortunately, I had a problem with the pit stop, and that meant that we didn't score any points. So hopefully here we can get them back and, and score plenty of points. And the team's talked about it all and you know what the issue was coming from Monaco? Yeah, correct. So we, we know the issue and I hope we, we can um, forget that one and, and look forward for good points here. And just finally for me, it's a, it's a difficult one, um, Montreal, isn't it? Because you've got uh, some street, but then some permanent tracks. So how do you get your head around somewhere like this? It's an amazing track. It's one of my favorite places here. Uh, it's a place where you are all over the curve. It's a bit like a karting track, you know, that is where we all started and, and we enjoy it so much to be all over, over the curves and, and the car is always dancing a bit. So it's definitely a, a, a track that I enjoy a lot.
Thank you. Thank you. Now, although the Monaco Grand Prix wasn't quite the victory that Sebastian Vettel, easy for me to say, would have craved, the fact that he finished above Lewis Hamilton means he has clawed back some points uh, in the Drivers' World Championship standings. Now, we spoke earlier about power units, the fact that Renault have an upgraded power unit for this weekend. Ferrari, too, we understand, have taken their next step uh, with their power unit. This, of course, being a circuit on which you are at full throttle for so much of the lap. How confident does Vettel feel coming into this weekend? An important weekend potentially for him in the championship fight. Uh, we'll see. I think so far we've had a good car on the straights. We have a very efficient car this year, so uh, yeah, should help us on this type of track. But uh, as I mentioned as well, the tyres will be key. Make sure that they work and then they last. Uh, it's a lot of laps. I think we do 70 laps around here. Um, so a couple of key points, but I like the track. I like being here. We had quite a boring race in Monaco. Here it's usually entertaining. Last year you had a, you were nearly last and then you come back. Can you tell us about this track and this race last year, very entertaining for you and for the fans? Yeah, I mean, uh, also I think the year before I fell back and had to come back. So uh, for some reason I had interesting races here. Um, but I think it's a, you know, it's a good place. There's a lot of uh, hype around uh, this place in the city. and. A lot of people that come to the track and are very excited, so hopefully we have a good race. Um, I think it's normal that every now and then you have a boring race. Monaco, we know, is not the best take place to overtake, but it uh, should be different here. So let's see. I mean, if we have a boring race on Sunday, meaning having the cars running in one and two, then we would still be happy with that. But uh, that's a long way from now. Sebastian, we heard a radio transmission from you after Monaco saying, Go me disastro. Um, was the tyre situation in Monaco a one-off um, or, or are you not able to push on the tyres generally this year like, compared to last uh, year? Well, I think Monaco was a lot worse than the race before. So, um, yeah, it's just a shame because I think if you also compare to last year, I mean, Monaco, you always have a little bit of pace management because you can't overtake. So the guy in front can, you know, set the pace. But this year was extreme because the tyres you know, we couldn't push, so I think that's what we meant after the race, and you could see also during the race. So I think it's a no-brainer to compare to last year the lap times, and then you see a big difference. Whereas if you take the other race, it's not been that big. So I think that regard is a one-off, uh, but overall, I think the tyres this year are a bit more vulnerable than last year. Same tyres here. Yeah, we will have the same tyres. Now, obviously, it's a different track, different nature. Usually here. Uh, it can vary a bit more which tyres the limitation. Um, yeah, uh, we will see. I think Friday will be important. I think weather-wise it should be fine, so at least uh, consistent, and then we see how much we can read. Right, we've spoken to Sebastian Vettel earlier today. Lewis Hamilton did a press conference. He was in fairly light mood, I'm going to say, um, confident as he always is. The question was asked of him, how important is this weekend? He said it's no more important than any other race weekend. 25 points, of course, up for grabs. And that is, the, I think, the, the mindset of somebody who's you know, definitely looking at the championship, taking every opportunity, every point that he can, but not giving overdue importance to one weekend uh, over another. But here's the thing. We've already mentioned Renault, upgraded power unit. We think Honda have got some more juice as well. Ferrari also with the new unit. Mercedes were due to have a new power unit this weekend as well. However, they found some issues with it. They've returned them all to base and therefore will be running the older spec power unit this weekend here in Canada. Will that hurt them? Will that hold them back? Will that put the advantage into the hands of the Red Bulls, of the Ferraris in what is turning out to be a very tight championship fight in which all three teams now have two wins apiece? We're going to ask that of Valtteri Bottas, a driver who really started to shine uh, in his debut year in Formula One here for Williams, qualified third on the grid, did such an astonishing job. And really, it's, it's that kind of track for Valtteri, almost like a little stop starty track that he can find that flow, just find something in himself that brings out the best uh, of Valtteri. How confident is he feeling here? And let's not forget, this is a guy who could and arguably should have been leading the World Championship after Baku for my money, pound for pound, one of the best performers of the season so far. And I think still the dark horse in this championship fight. How does Valtteri Bottas feel coming back to that place that first announced him onto the world stage? Well, for sure, it's always nice to come to a place you know that you've 
done uh, decent job in in the past years. And yes, I remember very well my first year in Formula One with Williams in the qualifying was third year, which was kind of the my breakthrough result in qualifying for that year and uh, kind of one of the key things that saved uh, that year and allowed me to continue my career in Formula One. So um, yeah, always good memories here. Uh, normally have good, had good results. So that's why it's, it's, it's good to be back. And now you've got one of the best cars in the grid underneath you. Can you guys fight for victory this weekend or the fact that you've not been able to bring that engine upgrade? Is that going to hurt you? I think we can. I think we, we, we think it's going to be, again, another close weekend, but definitely it's going to be a stronger one uh, for us than, than Monaco. So we are here to fight for the win, even though the, with the old engine. And it's not like the old engine is, is, is weak. You know, It's still a pretty good engine and just the new one would have been a bonus. The old engine is old. So it's got a lot of miles on it. Are you going to have to look after it throughout this weekend? Will you be able to push as, as hard as you would want? I think we are good so far with the damage metrics. And uh, I think this is going to be the last race for the for this one. So I think we are confident we can run, run it as usual as all the weekends before. So that should be hopefully good. And it's going to suit the car? I, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be much better for our car than, um, uh, than the last couple of races. So I hope so. Thanks, man. And finally, we come to Red Bull Racing. Daniel Ricciardo, of course, winner in Monaco. And for 50 laps, it looked sketchy. Some people have said Monaco was a boring race. It wasn't exciting. Nobody ever took each other. And yet Daniel Ricciardo, for 50 laps of that race, was nursing a broken car. MG UK went. Rear brake started overheating. Team were like, it's terminal, mate. It's game over. Daniel put the bias, bias, brake bias to the front of the car and essentially had no rear brakes, trying to nurse that car home whilst having Sebastian Vettel breathing down your, lap, uh, your neck. For 50 laps in Monaco, that's hard, right? And everyone says, oh, that's boring. And yet when Nigel Mansell on fresh tyres is hunting down Ayrton Senna and can't pass him in Monaco, it's one of the greatest races ever. Make your mind up, people. What is it? It's Monaco. You can't pass there. Everyone knows it. Anyway, be that as it may, it was a great victory and it has announced Daniel Ricciardo into this World Championship fight. I just saw him. A little bit earlier, he says he's still not completely come down from that elation, that joy of taking victory in Monaco. It meant so, so much to him. And it was a brilliant drive to, uh, yeah, to get on top of those, those, those car issues. We talk about Daniel now being a definite championship contender, but what of his teammate Max Verstappen, a driver of which so much is expected and hoped for. He has now less than half of the points of his teammate. And in Monaco, once again, this time on the Saturday, he made a mistake which put him to the back of the grid. That's six mistakes in six races. Where would he be if he wasn't making those mistakes? Arguably, he could be in the championship fight as well, but he's not. And that has caused his team boss, Christian Horner, to say on the record this week, Max has got to change something. He has to change something in the way that he goes racing. Something in his mindset isn't right, and he has to change it. But how does Max react to that? Will Max take heed of what his team boss is saying, or will he continue in the manner that he has been all season of saying, this is what got me to Formula One, this is the way I race. I'm not changing for anybody. No, I think absolutely not. I think it's more that if I try to change something, it goes wrong. So. I'll be the same Max I was also the last three years. So. so you don't agree with Christian? You don't agree that you need to change I, anything? It doesn't mean that I'm not agreeing with, with Christian, but you know, sometimes what is said on TV or in the media can be turned around in a different way. But I don't think I need to change my, my mindset and, and approach to, to a weekend. I know very well what I have to do, it's just somehow this year it hasn't gone the way I liked. Um, but I think it's also if, if you try to to be different, that's not, not going to work because that's not how you grew up and not how you raised before. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I was able to do it last year, so I should be able to do it this year as well. But we all, as people, we have to grow, we have to develop, we have to change. If we always act like we did three, four years ago, we never grow as people and as racing you drivers. Can, it's the grow same. in that style. Absolutely. But, I mean, not saying you, you, you drop your core essentials of who you are, but you learn from your experiences, surely. Yeah, but um, I'm still the same person and I would still approach it in the way I've always done, you know, as a, as a driver I am. Um, like I said, you know, you, you can learn from it, but it's not that I'm certainly going to be a conservative person because that's not how, how I am and I'm not going to drive here just to be six and just get some, get some points on the board, just, you know, to be six in the championship. I'm here to win races and, yeah, well, sometimes it, it involves a bit more risk, but of course, you know, you need to find the right balance between that. And yeah, somehow this year it hasn't been 
going the way I liked. Mm. But like I said, I don't need to change too much. It's just a little bit of fine tuning. It's not a completely different approach. Because people would say, you know, you're on half the points of your teammates. If had instance in every race so far this year, that approach maybe might need more than just a slight alteration. No, last year was good, and the year before as well. You know, I was scoring a lot of points in um, one race or so. Like I said, it's just a little fine tuning. So that is your lot from Paddock Pass here uh, in Montreal at Force India. Let's not be finished yet. Hello, Nicholas. Um, Nicholas Atifi, ladies and gentlemen, Formula Two uh, superstar, and going to be driving here for Force India this weekend. Looking forward to going out on track. Yeah, very much. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, since uh, I found out I was going to be doing the FP1 here, it's been uh, they have been looking forward to uh, yeah so since then, and it's uh, very fast approaching now. We're we arrived here in Montreal, and uh, yeah, tomorrow I'm going to be taking part in my first FP1. So I'm uh, over the moon with that. First FP1 and on your home track. I mean, that's that's got to be so. I don't know, terrifying in a way, as well as really exciting. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, it's very going to be a very special day for me. Um, I mean, I was born here. Uh, I, I'm, I live in Toronto, uh, but uh, this is where all my you know, say family and a lot of my friends are. Uh, so I'm going to have a big group out here to support me. And yeah, definitely, it's, there's going to be some, some nerves. Uh, but um, I mean, I'm not here to uh, set uh, the quickest lap of the session in FE1. I'm here to, uh, to do a job for the team and to uh, get through the program and to help push along the yeah the program into FP2 when I give the car back over to Sergio so uh, you know I'm uh, I, I want to do a good job for the team you know supporting to uh, show that show them I'm capable of of getting the job done uh, but I think above all else I'm just going to enjoy the experience because it's uh, I think it's definitely going to be the highlight of my year. Awesome stuff. Thanks very much, mate. Good luck. We'll see you later. Thank you Thanks, sure. Nicholas. See you later. So confirmation as well that he's replacing Sergio, who we expect is probably still getting over the hangover from his wedding. That gives him an extra hour and a half. Excellent stuff. Good guy, Nicholas. Really talented kid. And um, yeah, we'll be seeing much more of him, I'm sure, um, in the future months, years of Formula One and Formula Two. Don't forget to, to keep on with Formula Two. Next race in France. France is coming next. Really looking forward to that. But we've got a whole weekend here in Montreal to go first. This is always such an exciting race weekend. What will the weather do? Will it bucket it down or will it be glorious sunshine? It's either one or the other, never anything in between. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys are too. Keep up with everything over the weekend on your F1 social feeds. But for now, from all of us here in Montreal, we will see you later.